Welcome to Around the Old Town. I'm Bob Toomey. With me is Superintendent of the Abington Public Schools, Peter Schaefer. Peter, thanks for being on again. Thank you for having me. This is a tradition. We start the year off every year with, uh, with Peter, talk about the events involving the Abington schools. And uh, as you know, with the new school building, uh, we have a lot going on there. And Peter, later on, is going to actually do a video and show you the construction as it stands now, all the development. Uh, I just want to start off first. Uh, we had a, a fellow in the community. Uh, Joe Godfrey that passed away this week. He has two students at Abington High School uh, who are very active in sports and in the high school itself. And I just want to send our condolences to, to the family. They're, they're very nice people and very actively involved. On a second note, we had a situation where there was a, in, a community shooting and a fellow got hurt. And I just want to say thank you to Peter Person because the response from the Abington school system was tremendous. They had counselors there to assist the students. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad that we have to deal with that, but the superintendent and his staff were very prepared to deal with it. And uh, as a result, a lot of the students uh, feel less harmed by the situation. And uh, I just want to say thank you personally. And if, any comments, of course, you'd like to say about that? Um, one of our uh, people may or may not know that one of our students was injured in the community uh, seriously. Um, and um, just um, obviously, our thoughts and our prayers are with everyone involved, um, but but more than that, um, it's our place in the community to provide whatever support is humanly possible to support uh, families, whether w no matter what the tragedy or occurrence or the trauma might be. That's that's um, the most important thing. Uh, at you know at that time, everything else becomes second, um, and. Um, the Abington community has a long, uh, proud tradition of standing by people and coming together. Um, it's one of the reasons I love being in Abington, um, because it's really about um, selfless uh, acts and taking care of other people. Um, without a doubt, without a question, the outpouring and the support for people in Abington that, that I've been, a, been fortunate enough to be just one small piece of um, is one of the things that you know drives me in my in in what I do when I you know I get out of bed in the morning, and um, you know on this occasion we provided some uh, um, information for for kids coming to school because kids are curious about these types of things um, in 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 a thoughtful way provided by an adult, um, but still um, you know then tried to move on into the regular day to get our kids uh, moving forward. But people respond to um, trauma in a variety of ways, um, depending on how connected they are to the person that experienced the trauma. It's on TV all the time. We're hit over the head with um, trauma that people are experiencing. And if you, know, you could potentially be connected very closely and emotionally to those people that are experiencing that trauma, and that has an effect on people, especially kids. Um, and then also, even if you're not closely related or connected to those people who are experiencing trauma, sometimes in your life you experience something that it brings you right back to yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago where you experienced a trauma in your life. Um, and then, you know, people go through that process of processing those things emotionally um, themselves. And so um, knowing that kids uh, and all of us, especially kids, um, go through that process. We also wanted to provide uh, counselors to help and work with the kids that are most um, affected by whatever the event might be. And so then, um, you know, we follow up with the families to make sure the families know about the conversations that are occurring for those kids that need some more time um, so that parents are best prepared to, uh, to know what, what their kids are feeling. Um, and then, you know, we circle back with them over a number of days or weeks or however long it takes um, because that's, that's what we do uh, to take care of people. So, um, and we try to do, you know, what, what people need. And so what I always ask is that, um, you know, people not hesitate to let us know what they might need. Um, we can't do everything, but anything within our power that we can do to help people um, the kids and the families that we serve, um, that's why we're here. Well, so. you're doing it. And no. I, I appreciate it, and I'm sure the community does as well. Thanks. Oh, on a more positive note, we have yep. the new school year starting, 2016-2017 yep. school year. Uh, I understand you have new staff 
that are involved that we may not be familiar with? Um, we have a, a number of new uh, staff members. You know, we do every year. We've got people that, that go on uh, who are paraprofessionals, who become teachers, or go on and do something else, or, or family circumstances, they move. Um, we also have uh, some new administration in Abington at our, at our Beaverbrook Elementary School. We've got Catherine Zinni and Jonathan Haas, who um, you know, they had some coffees. They, they had the open house. They uh, opened themselves up and did surveys with their parents to, to um, hear from them. Um, and they continue to listen and talk, um, and it's a, and, and it's exciting. They're they're quality people who care deeply about the work they do, um, and um, they're off to a good start. And similarly, at the Woodsdale Elementary School, we've got uh, David Summergrad, who um, is uh, the new principal there, and um, he's um, done the same thing. He's been meeting with parents had coffees, talking to people uh, and staff, and um, off, to, off to a good start uh, with the community. You know, as people are aware, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later, we have a, a new building that's coming online, so that means some shifts and changes in um, positions. Um, we don't um, anticipate uh, too many more, um, but there needs to be some movement as we accommodate a new grade configuration. Um, so, you know, in that, uh, to that end, Matt McCurtain has gone to the Frolio Middle School. He's going to be the five through eight um, principal uh, of, of that building when that comes online. Um, and that's exciting because he's, um, he's got such great experience here in Abington with the kids and the staff and the families. And then as we um, bring these two schools together, it's, it's important to have, you know, that view of the grades 5, 6, and the grade 7, 8, because we don't want it to be a school where it um, tips too heavily toward the 8th the grade end or tips too heavily toward the 5th grade end. We want grades 5 and 6 to have its own feel in the building. It's going to have its own floor. And we want grades 7 and 8 to have its own feel uh, in the building. Um, it's going to have its own floor in, in, in the middle school. So sure. not only do we separate the high school from the middle school, we have some uh, good separation between uh, seven and eight and five six. Sure. So, and I know Kevin Atkins. I talked to him. He's a, a great person with the schools, and I hope he moves on to bigger and better things. And Rosanne Kaposkas, as you know, these there's a career here, and people do move. And sure. They, they seek better business and better opportunities, and so especially Kevin and I did a lot of work together. And I wish you the best of luck, Kevin and Roseanne, best of luck. And as you said, uh, Mr. McCurtain. He's been in the system. He knows what's going on, and he's comfortable with the, with the fellows and, and ladies in the school system. And so that's it's a good positive movement in that in that situation. Uh, anything about the other than the school development? Anything new you wanted to talk about? Maybe the technology. Or sure. Um, the the Abington taxpayers have um, been uh, very uh, generous to support this building that we're creating. And let me just walk you through the, the thought process here. I remember when we were talking about this vote, many people asked the very good question, why does a new building mean a better education? Why does a better building mean a better education? One of the components that comes with this new building is uh, technology. And it's like any job that anybody does in any field, um, whether, you're, whether you're building a shed in your backyard or you're, or you're teaching a class or whatever job you have. The tools that you have are important to doing a quality job. Um, you do a better job with better tools. The tools that we will have that come with the building um, are going to improve the educational experience for our kids. So as we go down this road, we're spending a lot of time this year on professional development in the area of technology for our staff so that when the door opens, um, they're better prepared and better able to um, provide that experience for our students. Now, as we started this process, I'm just my own thinking was not only do we need to do this because we have this new technology in this new building, but it's incredibly obvious and it's, it, it, everybody knows that technology is driving um, so many of the changes in our society. We need to do this anyway because our kids deserve this. Right. Our children are going to be going out into a workforce and doing jobs that don't exist today. Exactly. We don't even know what they are with technology. 
because it's changing so quickly. And not everybody, you know, thinks that's a good thing. Um, it, it, it is a thing. It's, that's, that is happening. Right. And if our kids are going to be competitive and be successful, um, this is what we need to provide for them. So we're doing a lot of work with technology um, so that students will be using technology in a way that's very productive and meaningful. So you can be effective with technology or not. And it's got to be more than just a cool toy or, or an entertainment piece. Sure. Because you can take, um, let me use a, the example of a word processing program. So you can use a word processing program and you can use it like you use a typer, typewriter. And that just basically replaces the typewriter. Or you can add value with a word processing program because you're using the grammar check, the spell check, you're using the save functions. You're, you're, you're not having to keep paper copies of it because you have an electronic copy. You're able to then, um, and that adds value to what you're creating. Then you take it to the next step. Um, you can use technology to redefine and do things that you never thought possible. For example, right now, our uh, writers for the Green Wave Gazette at our high school are being published nationally. That's fantastic. So they, they write something for the newspaper, and then it feeds electronically. And again, you're not, we're not just replacing the typewriter here. Um, we're, we're then, they're then crafting and creating this, and um, it, it feeds into a national electronically newspaper, and the best articles are read nationally. So, you know, when I, back in the Stone Age, when I went to school and I had to write a paper, you know, what I did over my summer vacation, the only one reading it was God bless her or God bless him was Mr. Kroll, my seventh grade um, uh, English teacher. Sure. And now, and, and I try to do a good job, but think about how motivating it is that something I could write is going to be on a red national. Sure. That's and, awesome. and the quality work that we're getting um, makes me very proud I agree. of our kids. Yeah. Um, and that's just one example. So that's an example of technology redefining something that was never possible before. Sure. And those are the kind of experiences that we want to give our kids. Um, so we've been fortunate. We were able to get uh, Microsoft to donate uh, quite a bit of time and resources to provide trainers. And we're even more fortunate that we've got people in our district, teachers who are technology liaisons or teachers that are already using these strategies who are then trained by the Microsoft people who are going to be doing the training in-house for us Excellent. as we start this school year because as our teachers work with other teachers who are um, uh, using these tools, um, they're right across the hallway. Right. Um, it, it, we, it builds in more support and more assistance. It's, um, it's not only um, financially um, shrewd and conservative to to do it this way because uh, you're not flying in people from consultants right <coughs> you're using your you're, you're bringing in some people that have been donated by Microsoft to train our people um, who have more credibility than somebody coming in sometimes from the outside because they're in the room right next to you right um, working with kids and they're there long term to help you um, work uh, with, uh, with the technology. That's so fantastic. Cool. We're excited about those things, um, and that's why we're doing them. Um, you know, if, if people, I know we're going to get to this video, sure. but if people, I just want to remind people, you know, we had three depression era buildings, um, or we do, that we're, that we're currently using. And all of this comes uh, with the state paying for 57-ish, it's, um, and it's 57 point uh, something percent of this project. So for every dollar that the Abington resident has has provided for this project, um, the state is is adding you know another. Um, so for every uh, dollar that that we provide, the state's adding another fifty seven dollars. So um, that's just so much better than having maintained those old buildings, because I know as people drive by this new construction site, they're paying for it. Sure. And so it's with great responsibility, with great appreciation for that, that we need to get and maximize these dollars to get the best building 
for Abington. So mm -hmm. we're just really excited about this. Well, it seems like this is really where you want to get going. So let's let's do the video. Let's why don't you discuss the video, and then when we're done, we can talk more about any. You might be talking mentioned uh, subjects about the video, and I'll have more questions sure. for you. So we we'll have time. So. Uh, why don't you do the video? It's about a 10 minute video. The superintendent's gonna describe the construction level that we're at now and what's gone on since started and, and actual video footage of where we're at today. So Mr. Schaefer, go ahead. So um, this was uh, produced with KBA Architects, but I wanna thank Justin um, for his work with this, with, with Roger Bodie. Um, this, uh, this was provided by him and some drone shots, which are exciting. Uh, you can see in this, uh, caption the building we're currently using in front of the new construction which is behind. Um, this is the turf field which was just uh, completed. Um, you can see um, the the large area uh, provided there. Uh, you can see the light poles are already in. Um, we went from the worst field in southeastern Massachusetts to probably the best field in Massachusetts. We've had our, our student athletes out there. They love it. Um, this is something that the communities around us have. And um, we, we caught up to them. And actually, because ours is newer, uh, ours is better. Um, it'll provide more time for kids to play sports because when, when it's raining, you can still use this without damaging the field. And um, so you're really getting a lot of bang for your buck. Um, we'll have natural turf. Uh, we'll have natural grass fields also. Um, just above that uh, field, you can see where the parking lot uh, is. That's going to be in place for uh, these fields and the building. Um, as we fly in a little bit closer, um, you're seeing the site of the future concession stand over there on the left. Um, we're currently using these fields, even though the building isn't uh, open yet. Um, getting these fields done didn't impact the speed of the construction in any bit in any way. Um, so, but we did need to take the fields offline, so it, we were able to get that done. So we have kids, we have a place for uh, in, in the community to use uh, the fields. That is currently the uh, student parking lot um, that's just been uh, completed in the last two weeks. Our high school students are parking that. So this side of the building, this left hand side, is the middle school wing. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you have the high school wing, keeping the students totally uh, separate um, physically from each other in two different sides of, of this building. Um, and again, you can see the, the current building in that, moving into um, the auditorium hallway. So that's the center of the building. That'll be a common area, and there'll be two different avenues to get into that area. Um, this is the interior of our building and you can see it's moving along very quickly. There's, it's, there's one kitchen for the entire district. We ship food out across the district. That, that kitchen will be this one in the coming years. That saves us money. It's efficient. Um, uh, so that, and, and again, you gain efficiencies by having a shared building. Um, having the infrastructure in place with one kitchen means you don't have to have two kitchens. Uh, this is um, a shot of what it will look like when it's completed, a rendering of the area we were just looking at. This is the high school cafeteria we're looking at right now, uh, just outside that uh, kitchen area uh, with a staircase uh, up, to the, up to the second floor on the high school side. Um, it's, uh, it's a large area. Um, I wish it were bigger because you can't have enough space in large uh, meeting spaces because we use them for multiple purposes. Um, but there's certainly um, enough room for, for all of the things that we need. Um, as we turn and continue down the high school hallway, the second floor, um, we're heading into the um, academic areas as we go down this hallway. You can see that it's, you know, the, the framing has been done, fireproofing has been done. Um, at this point, we're, is, we're finishing up some of the duct work here. Continuing down through the high school hallway, this is what uh, it'll look like when it's done. Um, looking into classroom areas, uh, and then uh, 
just wanted to make sure here that you know we're showing people the, the work of the different trades that are coming together. This is that end of that hallway. It's an intersection. Um, you can see the, the railing um, and, the, and the view down into the first floor. Uh, this is a classroom uh, in the high school. It's um, got adequate space. It's got natural lighting. Um, the an improvement on the uh, current environments uh, that we have. Um, and then you can see the, the field that's been completed out back. And we're looking over that parking area for that field. Heading back out of the classroom. Um, this is a back staircase uh, overlooking the fields. Um, you can see, you know, just how, just the quality of those fields visually. if I invite people to go out and take a look at them because um, they're, very, they're, very, they're a very impressive uh, place um, for uh, the community and our students. Moving down, uh, the, this is the high school side of that main middle atrium. Um, this is the Green Wave Cafe. We've got students uh, working in a program. It's a vocational uh, program, life skills program. Um, that will continue, and that's uh, their area. Um, where they sell products to uh, the students in the school, food items. Um, moving down this hallway, you can see there's a, there's a second story that, that overlooks this glassed-in uh, area. Um, this moves down toward the um, music room. The rooms, chorus, band, um, are on the left-hand side here. Then uh, the auditorium space is going to be on the left-hand side. And then eventually you get to the gymnasium space and the locker rooms. This hallway will be for high school students to get into those areas. And then as we uh, come to the end of this hallway, across from us there, that's, the, uh, that's going to be the fitness area. Um, it's not going to be a traditional weight room. It'll be a little more up to date than that with those kettle bells, bands, uh, weight, not weight stations, but uh, those pulley operation sta uh, stations that are currently being used by um, the athletic trainers that uh, people pay big money for at uh, gyms. Um, but uh, our coaches, our staff will be uh, teaching our students uh, the, the uh, use of those um, pieces of equipment. So in this area just here. You can see that it's completely framed where the walls are going up. Uh, this is the gymnasium area. Those purple boards are for uh, higher impact so that uh, we maintain the quality and the integrity of the walls. Um, you can see they're, they're taped together. Um, this is what the gymnasium will look like when we're done. So it will be a full high school size gymnasium and then in the middle school gymnasium will be behind it. Um, that does a lot of things for us. That provides that large volume space so that if you need a shelter uh, area for the community, we have that. Um, um, it also provides a shelter area for our students. It also provides a large area if you have to have an event where you've got to hold um, a great number of people. Um, so that was in the planning. This is the, um, the uh, auditorium, 750 seats, which the town of Abington has never had an auditorium like other communities. Um, we're proud that this is a part of our project for the community, for our students. Uh, this performance area, um, again, um, the state uh, makes sure that, that it's outfitted with all of the um, most up-to-date, you know, lighting and sound um, so that the productions, um, the arts, uh, have a, a space for um, presentations, um, for um, performances. Mechanical room. Um, with our with our uh, heating plant, um, it's a all energy efficient, uh, green. Um, we were able to get those higher lead uh, standards uh, into this project, um, so that it's um, very very efficient uh, in terms of how we're heating our buildings. Um, This is um, the middle school area. 
Um, these, uh, we're further along in the project than this. Uh, the, the walls are all framed in the way you see here. In the, in, uh, um, that was an earlier shot. Um, those, those classrooms are also um, of the appropriate size. This is um, a project seminar room where uh, we're already Skyping in authors from around the world to have book chats with our students. We don't have the capacity to do a good job of that now. Um, we're using the Paul K. Smith room. Uh, it's, it's loud, it's hard to get good connections. Um, this, that project seminar room will be a room where we do things uh, like that um, with our students, or also for use with the community. Um, it's, it's an impressive space where teachers will be able to use it for uh, teaching and learning. Um, that's a bunch of paper on a desk, uh, plans and diagrams, and um, a thank you to uh, Justin for helping us put this together. So. That's great. It's, it's phenomenal what progress you've made in a relatively short period of time. Uh, I assume the, the mild winter probably helped for that. Or, Absolutely. You know. And I, and I got to say, um, the building committee is an amazing group of volunteers uh, in the Abington community who have been working very, very diligently on this. And I don't know if you've had a, a chance. Um, Bill Davis has filmed a number of those, so the community gets a chance to see those meetings and the deliberations that occur. So there are those, there are those meetings, and then there are other planning meetings um, to prepare for those meetings with the architects and the engineers. Um, and uh, you know, Richard Testa, the chair of that building committee, has been doing a wonderful job with, with all of the members um, in terms of um, the work that, that's being done with um, KBA and AI3 on this project. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work, sure. but it's a labor of love, and it's uh, something that, that we're passionate about. Sure. Um, because we're going to get one shot at doing this right, and we know that we're going to look back on this and there's going to be, you know, it's like redoing your kitchen or, or a bathroom. There's, all, there's going to be something that we, that we regret that we didn't think of. Right. And um, we, we I, you know, I want that list to be, yeah, I, I, mean, I'll, I'll, right? I don't want to have regrets about exactly. this. Exactly. You want every conceivable notion thought of now before. So we, I mean, we talk out um, every, every fine detail to, to every single person piece of furniture to where every shelf is going to go in the standard classroom and how much window space there's going to be and how the windows are going to operate. Um, and I, I just I really appreciate the work of this committee because, um, again, it's been a labor of love and uh, a passion for all of us. I think many projects, they, they have the people that do the architect, do the engineering, but they never actually talk to the people who are going to use it. And obviously you've been doing that. You have the teachers come in. And yeah, the, the students have been touring it at different times. Um, we, our, our project engineers have gone out and met um, with faculty. Last year we did a lot of those meetings. We, they've met with the students. We did a lot of those meetings last year. Um, so and if people are interested um, for more information about, about the building, there's actually a live camera feed um, that uh, updates itself every two or three seconds, and so you can see the, <laughs> the construction equipment. Um, it's, it's, I, I, like, what, I like seeing it. I, mean, sure. I don't sit there all day and watch it, <laughs> right, you have but I do, do like uh, <laughs> that it's available to people, and I do like seeing it, and it's at uh, www.asbc.us. Okay. Maybe if, we, if it's possible to put that on the screen, I'm not sure, but it's, uh, it's great because I've used it myself, and you're right, of course, every two seconds I can't do that. But it, well, even once a week, it's phenomenal, the progress that's made if you, if you mm -hmm. look at it every once in a while. And if people um, want to, you can go to our Abington Schools website, uh, and there's a link uh, to it off of And off what is the school's website, if uh, you know? www.abingtonps.org. Okay. There it is right there. Justin's ahead of us. <laughs> Oh, if they use the Abington PS.org, do they have to go to like a There's, a link, there's yeah. a link to it okay. um, off of that website for the Abington School Building Committee, or you can go to the Abington School Building Committee website. Too. Right. So. And one of the things, of course, people like Bill Davis and Justin and myself are interested in is you mentioned the studio that's going to be there. It's yeah. state of the art. I mean, it seems like everything's state of the art. Yeah, and, and the exciting thing about the studio is, is, that, is that our students will be there on site to participate 
in the studio and, and the use of media. And the, the great thing about using um, the cable company is there are so many, I'm not even going to call it a 2-4, it's like a 6-4 because um, it helps uh, provide content uh, for the community about things uh, that are going on in the schools and we want people to see what's going on in the schools. We're proud of those things. It provides a place for our students to work with Abington uh, Cable um, and they um, benefit from that experience, this use of technology and media. Um, and when our students are using te this, this media, um, you can go anywhere with it. No doubt. It's, it's, it's um, you know, m maybe it's uh, doing commentary on a, on a sports event. Maybe it's um, hosting a, uh, a performing arts, a, a drama production. Um, maybe it's writing a performance, editing a performance, um, producing a performance. Uh, maybe it's a science demonstration. So there isn't anything that we do in the life of a school that you can't use this sort of media to um, improve the experience sure. for it's our students. It's a practical application of yeah. it. And so, and at the same time, again, it's, it's helping the community see what's going on, what kids are doing. It's helping Abington Cable provide them a, an area for the work, the good work that they're doing. So, um, just a lot of uh, a lot of planning, a lot of work, but again, it's it's hard not to get excited about something that's going to be that good for the community and for kids. I agree, and it's interesting because uh, in my particular case, two of my boys have already gone, but my third son will be there for the, his senior year. But even if you don't have children that are going to be directly involved in it, it it's going to help the whole community. And whether it's for your property taxes, you know, and your property right. value going up, or just the fact that you have like an auditorium to see events, like uh, 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 the, he does the shows, the plays. Uh, Steve Shannon. Steve Shannon. Yep. I was going to say Justin Shanahan, not because he's in, he's in the studio. Yep. He does a tremendous job of plays, and it's tough to watch it in the gym of the Frolio. Right. It doesn't do him credit, and it doesn't do the play and the, and the kids credit, whereas the state of the art studio. Well, the concerts oh, that we right. have. Con perfect. Where we've got uh, you know, elementary schools and students that are performing, and they're proud of their performance, and then you know, as a, as a parent, you, you, you be, you know, you're a puddle because it's so hot <laughs> and crowded by the end of the performance. And um, it's, you know, if you're, if you're older, if you're a grandparent coming to it and, you know, you, know, you worry about people in the heat and uh, the crowded conditions, um, this is going to be so much better. I agree. Um, I'm trying to think anything else that you might want to bring out. The technology we discussed and, of course, the new school building. Nothing comes to mind. And I can always come back. I was going to say, you're and always you're welcome. You're very kind well, to I have appreciate me. It. Well, as you said, we want the community to know what's going on. And, and it's excellent. And we have so many positive things to discuss that we'd like to get it out there. At least I'd like to get it out there. Um, if, you, if you're more well, welcome, come back anytime. You know that. Uh, a couple of things I want, I want. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I want to mention uh, the Abington Food Pantry. It's getting uh, winter time and it's fall and whatnot, and a lot of people tend to, during the summer, to forget about donating to the Abington Food Pantry. If you could keep them in mind, uh, they're right on Plymouth Street. They're right near the St. Bridget School prod, uh, development there. Uh, also, this is September. Uh, September 11th is uh, National Day of Service that Christy Coombs is very involved in. They're going to be at the, Ro the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Uh, right near the aquarium on September 11th to do packaging for soldiers and they're going to pack goods up to send them as like, care packages. September 18th, we have the Woodsdale School. Again, the school's involved with the lot there. and uh, have Christy Coombs and it's an Abington Family Day and if you've never been there, please make the effort to go. It's a tremendous event. Everything's free. Uh, you can buy chances, etc. But there's also a road race that day and if you can make, they have bouncy things. They have uh, hot dogs and ice creams and entertainers and if you can make it down there please do it's well worth your while so uh justin chin and bill davis thank you again for all you've done and helping us out with this particular show and uh, bill i'll see you tonight at the average high school football opening night uh, thank you again peter thanks for coming on and justin bill davis thank you so much we'll be on again in a couple weeks jim crosby was unable to be here today the veterans agent we're going to try to schedule him on and also there's we're going to have uh, michelle christian Olden and uh, Doug Alwood coming on to talk about a new event coming in October. So, thank you very much. Have a great day.